This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. Spring is in full swing and that means flowers are set to bloom, but for some, you better enjoy them while you can because they may be gone in a blink of an eye. To learn more about different spring flowers, we have Kristen Noel from the Missouri Department of Conservation here this morning to kind of break it down and identify these different ones we may see or may plant in our own yard. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning, Alex. Good to see you again. Thanks for mm -hmm. coming on. So first of all, Let's talk about the spring flowers or what they're also known as spring um, ephemerals, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, so they're called spring ephemerals because these flowers bloom for as short as one day to a couple of weeks. Um, so they're very ephemeral. It's not like they bloom all spring and all summer long. And um, they're interesting because they actually get a jump on the other plants before the trees even leaf out. Mm -hmm. They're already blooming and, and harnessing the energy of the sun you know, to grow. And um, that, that's why they're called spring ephemerals because they come out really early and they, they get a jump on things. You tend to find them in our woodlands and forests. Mm -hmm. They like a lot of shade and moist environments. And here in Missouri, they'll start blooming the end of March and they'll bloom through May. And we're coming up soon on the peak will be mid-April. Oh, fantastic. Now, are some of these flowers really showy? Can you be able to identify them as soon as you see them? Talk about that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, a lot of the earliest bloomers are white and pinkish, but they can be very showy. Uh, mm -hmm. The bloodroot, for example, has a really large white flower. It will only have one, but it's large um, for the size of the plant. And the spring beauty has cute little white flowers with pink striping. Mm -hmm. And hepatica um, is an interesting plant because not only does it have a showy little flower, but the, its leaves are shaped like the lobes of a liver. Mm -hmm. And my one of my personal favorites, Dutchman breeches, mm -hmm. its flowers look like little pantaloons. That's okay. why the, the name. Um, we also have some blues and purples. Bluebells uh -huh. have beautiful blue trumpet-shaped flowers. And most everyone's familiar with the woodland phlox, mm -hmm. which is um, matte-forming purple flowers in our woodlands. And my favorite color is yellow, so I can't leave that out. Uh, we have bellwort. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful yellow flower that grows on side slopes usually and wood betony. And then lastly, there's a real interesting flower, Jack in the Pulpit. Mm -hmm. It has a small spike of flowers, but it has really showy greenish purplish bracts and it has a very unique look to it. Yeah, and of course, while you were talking about all of these uh, flowers, we were posting pictures on our screen for our viewers. Now, I heard uh, that some of these were actually used by Native Americans, so explain that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you know how we like to season our food with wild ginger? Mm -hmm. So Native Americans will, uh, would also season their food with wild ginger, and it had uh, medicinal purposes as well. The uh, spring beauty I mentioned earlier, they would eat the tuberous roots because it has a chestnut flavor. Mm -hmm. And the blood root that I mentioned earlier, they would make a red dye from the root to dye their clothing in various um, textiles. And then the may apple, mm -hmm. um, they would eat the ripened fruit, and then may apple actually has a purpose today as well that's really useful. The alkaloids, which is a, a nitrogenous organic compound from the plant, um, is currently being used to, as a basis to design a drug to treat a variety of cancers. Interesting. Now, how do these flowers benefit wildlife? Um, well, because they bloom early mm -hmm. before other things are blooming, it's a really important source of pollen and nectar for pollinators, butterflies, bees, and um, flies and beetles, etc. And in particular, bumblebees, if you've noticed, they come out early because they mm -hmm. kind of, they're furry. It's not real fur, of course, but they're yeah. kind of hairy so they can handle chilly weather. And they in particular really like uh, the bluebells and the Dutchman's breeches. So it's an extremely important source of pollen and nectar for our native pollinators. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's also the fruit I mentioned earlier, Native Americans like the mayapple. Well, box turtles love May apple fruit as well in the fall, so it, it serves wildlife in a good variety of ways. Perfect. And mm. now looking at all these pictures, they're gorgeous flowers, and I'm sure a lot of viewers are wondering, can they plant these in their own yard? Yes, they can. Okay. Um, I, I just remind you, please don't collect these from the department conservation areas. However, there's several local nurseries that sell these, mm -hmm. and I, in fact, purchase uh, bluebells and woodland flax myself from a local nursery to plant at our Northeast Regional Office, and it's done quite well. Keep in mind, you have to have the proper conditions. These are forest woodland plants. Mm -hmm. So if you're planting them in your yard, you need to have sh partial shade to shade, moist soil. Okay. It's not something you can plant at your mailbox that's mm -hmm. going to get uh, scorched by full sun. 
And also um, keep in mind that if you want to enjoy them not just in your yard, I encourage you to go for a hike on the Department of Conservation, um, our areas. There's several within an hour drive of Kirksville. We have Big Creek and Sugar Creek, Union Ridge and Dark Hollow. Mm -hmm. They all have wonderful woodland and forest resources. It's a great place to take your family for a hike and see these spring wildflowers. All right, perfect. And especially with the gorgeous weather, mine is today with the rain and stuff. But heading into the weekend and even next week with the gorgeous weather we have on tap, this would be a perfect thing to do with your family Absolutely. to go see some beautiful flowers. Well, thank you so much, Krista, for coming on. What we'll do is we'll post everything on our website at heartlandconnection.com and we'll link up all the information they need to know if they would like to plant these in their yard or if they like to go on a natural hike. Great, thank, thank you. you. And we'll be right back.